In the book of Acts, chapter 19, in verse 1, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So then Paul said to them, he says, Into what then were you baptized? Look at your neighbor and ask them, have you been baptized? And, and listen to what these disciples said. They said, we were baptized into John's baptism. And then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. This morning, before we lead these precious souls into baptism, I just want to take five minutes to share this word. Someone say, I am made new. Thank you. In the book of Acts, the two baptisms in water and the Holy Spirit are side by side, but there are very important differences between the two. When we give our life to Jesus, every one of us receives the Holy Spirit as the free gift of salvation. However, the word of God teaches, and I believe that every believer should experience the baptism of water. Because it's a powerful declaration of repentance. It's a powerful declaration of change. It's not just a rite of passage, a religious ritual. But baptism is a conscious decision. That's why here at Victory Outreach, we don't uh, perform infant baptism. We, we dedicate children to the Lord. We pray for wisdom for the parents. How many know as parents, we need more wisdom than ever in raising our children? We dedicate them to the Lord. We pray for wisdom for the raising of our children to be surrounded by the Lord. But baptism is when a person who comes into the age of accountability comes into a willing decision to serve Christ with their life. How many of you have made that decision? You're going to serve the Lord. And today, you're even going to see some of our own children baptized. Not because they're forced, but because it's their choice. Who can they give God? Who can give the Lord a praise? It's their choice. Three very quick things. Number one, when John the Baptist baptized people was to prepare people's hearts for the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. It's called the baptism of repentance. The word repent means the sincere regret or remorse for sin and wrongdoing. And you know, John the Baptist, when he led people in the public confession of sin and public commitment to live a life for God, his message was clear. And his message then is our message today. John's message as he baptized people in the Jordan River was Jesus is coming. The king is coming. Come on now. The king is coming. As he baptized men and women in that Jordan River, that was his message. The king is coming. He says, I've only come to pave the way. And that's the message I believe that's being spoken in 2023. As we baptize these new believers, not only are they making a decision, but they're declaring to the entire world and they're declaring to us this morning, Jesus is coming back. I thought you'd get more happy about it. He's coming back for his church. And I believe he's coming back not only as king, but he's coming back for a church that's without spot or blemish. I'm not talking about a perfect church. I'm talking about a redeemed church. I'm talking a church about a church that's been washed by the blood of the lamb. I believe he's also coming back for a church that's on fire. That's on fire for God. So baptism speaks this morning. The second thing is that baptism is an outward seal of an inward experience. It's the response to the fact that we have already repented and have received forgiveness. All these people that you're going to see baptized this morning, they've received forgiveness. They are made brand new. They are already new. The, the water doesn't make them new. They're already new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Who's grateful? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
So water baptism is a declaration of change. It's, it says the king is coming, and it says I've changed. I've had a change of heart. I've had a change in my thinking. I'm ready to walk in this new life. And I'll tell you, you got to pray for these that are going to be baptized today, just as some had prayed for you and I. Because when a baby learns to walk, it's a wobbly walk. Come on, you see that baby get up for the first time and he's like, hey, what's really going on? And he begins to walk and it's like a wobbly side by side walk. And how many will pray these believers through? How many said we will pray for you that the Lord will be with you as you learn to walk in his spirit and you learn to walk in his power? It's a declaration that we are made brand new. Today, you might hear a few words from them. They might say, Things like this. I, they might say, like, my name is Al. And at one time, I was a young man from a broken family. At a young age, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol and violence at a very young age. And at a young age, I had no purpose. I lived a life without purpose, and I was on my way to death and destruction. But one day, somebody invited me to Victory Outreach. And it was there that I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And today, and today, I am a pastor. I am a husband. I am a father. I am a grandfather. And if it had not been for the blood of Jesus and his saving grace, I would not be where I am at today. How about you? Who can praise God for your salvation? Who has a testimony this morning? And as they play softly, the Bible says that they were baptized, but they were not only baptized in water, but they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you are free from sin, every one of you. We're free from our sin. We're free from our past. We're free from old things. But, here, but here's some more good news. We are free now to live by faith. We are free to live by faith. There's no more exciting life than to live by faith. Your life has meaning. Your life has purpose. And we should say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit again. Lord, in fact, every two weeks, give me a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. You know, we talk about holding the harvest. We're reaping the harvest. How many know we want to hold the harvest, church? But the only one that can hold the harvest is the Holy Spirit. The only one that can hold you as a new believer is the power of the Holy Spirit. Fall in love with him. I, I want you to know that there is more. Can you look at your neighbor you're sitting next to and tell him there is more? So as we get ready to baptize you this morning, there is more. But here's my word, my charge to you. Press into the more press into the more of God. This is just the beginning today. Are you ready? Okay, why don't we go ahead and prepare?